Whoa. All right. So that popped up straight away. That's pretty wild. So, so today we have an interesting video. You're going to learn something in today's video about displays, specifically Samsung displays and some of the technology they've been using and some of the technology that enables their new folding devices most specifically. Now I have been using one of these right here. This is a Z Fold 3 5G. This has been in my pocket since it came out. There's no other product like it. Like, like this experience of having all this real estate, it's incredibly addictive. I mean, I don't need to tell you, you can go watch the video, but what makes this device possible? It all starts with the display and it has to be a great display and it also has to be a durable display and they've made all kinds of improvements specifically on the material that's on top of the display but it also goes down to the pixel and sub pixel level with how Samsung approaches displays in general. So I also have a Z Flip 3 over here as well because it gets some of the same benefits that the Fold has. And then lastly, we have this device. Uh, what is this called, a loop? Kind of like a microscope. You can place this on top of a display and zoom all the way deep in there in order to see the diamond pixel structure that Samsung uses in their displays. Now the reason for this structure is it has some advantages for high resolution images and your ability to uh, be able to perceive those images compared to those other technologies. So this diamond pixel structure is able to show complex patterns more accurately. Despite having the same resolution as other technologies, the diamond pixel structure from Samsung is able to take advantage even on a microscopic level, showing clearer images that can be seen even with the naked eye. This is mostly around text where the edges appear differently depending on that pixel structure. Now, the other thing that's important to note at this point is that Samsung displays aren't only and exclusively inside of Samsung devices. Samsung displays are all over the place in a variety of different smartphones. Now, here's another cool thing about this diamond pixel structure. It was developed by Samsung all the way back in 2002 and then first implemented with the Samsung Galaxy S4. Wow. Got the whole flop in one picture. Hey, you nailed it. I nailed something. What a throwback. Now this brings us to the Eco OLED portion. The elimination of this polarizer filter that lives between Samsung's UTG, that's the material on the surface of their foldable devices, and the OLED panel itself. The removal of that film means you're getting better light transmission, which allows you to tweak your battery in such a fashion to improve your battery performance. Now, the other thing you probably noticed about the Z Fold 3 is it's one of the first under display cameras, which is also sort of hidden. It's actually these technologies, the elimination of the polarizer that made this feature possible. So this diamond pixel structure that Samsung has implemented is developed in conjunction with the way that the human eye perceives color, specifically green, you may not know this, but the human eye is more sensitive to green light compared to red and blue. So the UTG technology, that's the stuff that lives on the internal display of the Fold products, stands for ultra thin glass. Also, as mentioned, flexible. Like that's the key feature with these products. How do they make it flexible and how many times can you flex it? Well, actually, it looks like the number here that Samsung has tested is around 200,000. 200,000 folds mean, well, that is around 100 times a day for five years. I'm trying to think right now how many times I fold and unfold this a day. I don't think it's 100 times. I don't think it's even close to 100 times, so. 7, 14, 7, 15, 7, 16, 7, 17, 7, 18, 7, 19. 7, 20. I did a thousand folds in one video. I would guess over the course of a day, I'd probably fold and unfold it maybe 50 times, maybe half of their estimate. Now it's funny, they have a graph here as far as uh, temperatures are concerned. That wasn't even something that I had thought about, folding in, in cold weather and how that might affect the hardware. They tested it all the way down to minus 20, which is very cold, minus 20 Celsius. It's like the coldest day you will ever have in a year in this city that I live in, in Toronto. It does happen, it can happen, but it's very, very cold. And they tested 30,000 folds in that temperature. So if you ever wanted to fold in the cold, you can cold fold.
But that also has me thinking about the new craze with the ice cream, which is you, it's on the slab. Yeah, and they roll it and put it in a cup. Is it just rolled? Is it cold rolled ice cream? Well, whatever, you can fold in the cold, you can roll in the cold, you can have ice cream in the cold. There's no rules around this stuff. That's the fantastic part. I like how they put Toronto on the graph and they made sure to let you know that there were three days in Toronto in 2020 that were below minus 20, which is actually colder than Moscow. In case you were wondering, in case you're in Toronto, you know exactly what's up with that. You can fold, you can keep folding. All right, so now it's time for the uh, the big inspection here. I'll be using this loop and these devices, which have already been set up. And I actually haven't done this before, but so I just have a white background, no internet Chrome background. I'm gonna do it myself first, see if I can get a good look and then uh, possibly hold the camera up to it and see what happens. Whoa. All right, so that popped up straight away. That's pretty wild, so. On autofocus, you can't focus that close. I'll do it on here. I kind of see it. I'll do it on here right now. You see those diamond shaped patterns? That's wild, man. We are deep in the display, in the display realm. Look, even on black, and then it boosts up. Check it out. Whoa, cool. You never looked at your display like that before. Now, the Z Flip should look identical because it's using the same technology, but let's go ahead and verify. Oh, yes. Oh, I have that one is just like staying still right now. Wow, that's like a cool wallpaper. Mm -hmm. Imagine if the wallpaper for your actual display on your phone was a picture of the display of your phone at the subpixel level. That's meta. That's some, I mean, you gotta be a serious nerd, but you're watching this, so. And then people are like, hey man, what's that cool colorful, colorful background? And like, it's just my screen. And they're like, no, I know it's your screen, but like, what is it? And you're like, well, it's a picture of. Anyway, so there you have it. That's a little bit of insight, a deeper look, a glance, if you will, into the realm of what makes a display happen. And in particular, a flexible display. This stuff is no joke. It's an incredible amount of engineering history of research and development to get to the point where not only are you having a display that folds, but you're having a display that folds that looks this good. The electronics, it's, we get used to it, but it's, it's pretty wild. <laughs>